Subscribe to Original Big Bry and follow Hitchtastic Tuesday. You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Falls. Tough day for you as fans. It's also been a tough day for, for race car drivers who thought by now they'd know uh, where they were in the field of 33 and whether or not they were going to uh, um, end up in that last shootout for the last row. And fortunately, the great thing about the Verizon IndyCar Series is that our drivers are understand the importance of you fans. And in fact, uh, within, you know, we're about an hour from the time that they actually go on track here right now, and several of them have joined us. So I'm going to invite them all up on stage here. We're going to have a little bit of fun with the drivers, but I thank you again. This is sort of a treat for them, to you, for all of your patience with us. But first of all, I will, it, actually, they're huddling, probably talking about what they're going to do here. But we right now we have six of them on hand here. You guys ready? Come on up. The first one I know really well. Con Hang on a minute. <laughs> test one, two, three, right? Test one, two, three. Yeah, that's it's Connor Daly. Wow! So now we Okay, great. So everybody, Connor Daly, second year, you got an opportunity to run, run the Indy 500 here this year. We're up 40 so far. Yeah, we uh, did 2.30, so almost 2.31, 2.31 on my screen, or on my field. But, uh, yeah, that was with a toe, so um, so we, we'll be all right uh, come qualifying. Uh, I mean, we hope, obviously, now things have changed, but um, we're still going to go out and we're still going to give Brian Barnhart four solid laps, as he'll say, and, uh, and yeah, we'll see what happens. Sounds great. Who else is in group one that's out here? Scott, you in group one? Everybody? Indy 500 champion Scott Dixon. Woo! Scotty D. So Scott, you uh, have been fast all month. How are you going to be now with a little bit of change that we have in the cars as we get ready for uh, qualifying here and practice at 1:30? Sorry. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's really just the unknowns. You know, uh, the configurations are definitely different from what we're used to. And you know, with the uh, with the target car obviously yesterday and this morning, we were really happy with the balance and and how our car was working, so it's, uh, it's obviously not something we wanted to see. I think, you know, we had a good shot at, uh, at the pole and definitely the front row. Uh, but, you know, we'll, uh, we'll you know, roll with the punches and, and uh, see what we can, uh, you know, pull out today. I think the speed is still going to be, you know, uh, you know decent and, and close between the cars. We'll just, uh, I don't know, that's the biggest thing. We don't really know. You know, we're going to get a half hour practice here at uh, 1.30 to try and figure out uh, what we can, you know, squeeze out of these cars. And, and hopefully uh, the number nine target car is still fast. So speaking of uh, Target and your teammate, our 2013 Indy 500 champion, Tony Kanaan, everybody. TK! So, so Tony, you're sort of a fan favorite around here. Fans have been waiting all day. You got anything you want to tell them? Well, I'm glad that you guys still like me because after the 2013, I thought after I won, then you guys wouldn't care anymore. But, uh, <laughs> well, uh, you know, I hope, uh, I want to thank you guys for staying. Obviously, you know how much we care about you guys. And uh, if it was about us, we'll be running at 232. You know, uh, I think this sport is dangerous as it is. That's why there's only a few of us that can do that. So I understand IndyCar's position, but I know it sucks to be, you know, waiting. So in half an hour, we'll put some laps for you guys. And I promise you next week will be a great race. So thank you. And uh, let's go. Alrighty. Awesome. And here's a guy, son of an Indy 500 winner, has got an Indianapolis sponsor connection with Steak and Shake, also in Group 1 practicing everybody, Graham Rahal. Yeah! So Graham, you, you, you came out with the brand new the brand new fire suit. Anybody stop and asking you to cook some burgers today? <laughs> I've had a couple. I've had a couple asking for shakes and you know, some steak burgers and things like that. But uh, I actually had one kid ask me how I like to uh, how I like working at Steak and Shake. So. <laughs> so I don't actually work there. I work with them. But you know, either way, first of all, I want to thank you guys for being here. I know these guys said it too, but. Uh, it's been a pretty brutal weekend, and you know to see all of you still show up, it means a lot to us. And you know we're going to do the best that we can to put on a good show today, and more importantly, a good show next weekend. So thank you guys for coming out. Appreciate hey, everybody, Graham. Awesome, Graham. Graham. You guys are welcome to stay up here. I'd like to ask some more questions, but I know you got more important things to do. So when you feel like you got a bolt, you guys get out. You're Group One. I want you. Got, all four of you guys are Group One. So head on out, everybody. These guys Woo! are Group One. Thank you for coming out and talking to your fans. All right. Next up, this guy has turned into an Indy 500 expert. He's been really, really fast when he comes here. Ladies and gentlemen, in the number 24 car, Townsend Bell. Yeah. Woo!
Bell. So this is, uh, this, you love this place. You, and you love going fast. So a little bit for you, you probably are okay as fa however fast we want to go. So how are you going to be now with a little bit a little bit more drag on the car? How are things going to be? I think it's going to be, I think it'll be good for us, but I, I know that all of you came to pole day to see one thing, which is how fast can we go? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to do our best with these modified rules. And trust me, Every race team is going to do the same thing right now. Look at the new the new situation for qualifying and make the best decision they can to go as fast as we can. Uh, but I came here when I was 10 years old, just like you. I sat in the stands and was mesmerized with the speed. And uh, I, hope, I hope next year we'll be going even faster. So thanks for hanging out today. Uh, it's an honor to race in front of you. The only reason we're here is because you're here. So thank you. Appreciate it. Bell. Now the next guy, this is the guy... He's the mayor of Hinchtown. Oh and yeah! I think we'd elect the mayor of Indianapolis if he ran. Ladies and gentlemen, James Hinchcliffe. Yeah, Hinch. I'm, I meant to ask the other guys, so I'll ask you. Um, you get one shot today, and maybe the speeds will be a tick slower, but the pressure seems to me like it's going to be an awful lot higher now than it would have been this morning. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? I was just having this conversation with someone because it's true. You know, it's it's going to be just as hard for us behind the wheel. We're still going to trim the things out as much as we possibly can and go in for absolute speed. And the, and the thing is, you only get one shot at it. And I mean, it puts so much more pressure on the engineers and they'll just set up. i got a guy that does gears that is having an absolute meltdown in the garage right now because you're trying to account for wind. You're accounting for an aero package you haven't run yet. A setup you haven't run yet, so this this really is going to be a team effort today, guys. Because the, the the guys that nail it, from the dude that does the tire pressures to the guy that does the springs to the guy that does the gears to the you know the moron behind the wheel, <laughs> everybody's got to nail it today, and that's the that's the car that's going to be on pole. And it's honestly it's actually nerve wracking for us only having one shot at it. You know, one of the, one of the other questions I, I've gotten tweeted at a few times, and people don't understand that once the last practice is over at two thirty, why aren't we going qualifying right away? We're going qualifying at 3.15. Can you talk about, it's this Herculean effort, really, that your crews have to do based on feedback and what you learn to get a car ready for qualifying. And that's why there's that 45-minute break. Why don't you talk about, when you get done, what's the crew have to do before they can bring that car back out in line? Nothing. They just polish it, put in gas, and go. <laughs> no, okay, no, that's not entirely true. Honestly, qualifying here at the Speedway is so important to all these guys. It is such a pride thing. You know, I, I've been lucky enough to sit on the front row a couple times here. I know how much this means to these guys. And... When you see like a mile an hour, a half a mile an hour difference in speed, in time we're literally talking about hundreds and thousands of a second. So these cars are prepared in, in, with like the most incredible amount of detail. Every single seam is taped up, every surface is polished, everything that rolls is, is heated up to make sure it rolls freer. If it makes power you try and cool it down to make more power. You got parts of the car that are really hot, parts of the car that are really cold. I mean it's the most complicated scientific process because every time tiny little little bit of drag of friction of anything we can get off the car is going to make a big difference on track so there's a lot there's an entire checklist it's a hundred and something points long that these guys have to go through so it's not just as easy as doing a practice lap polishing the thing and putting it back in line an awful lot of effort goes into what we're doing here today so both of you guys are in group two right can you hang for five more minutes have a seat james yeah, Townsend just reminded us he's not even dressed yet so i'm going to put you both on the spot i'm going to put Townsend on the spot first because he does this sort of for a living I'm going to give you the mic. You're on TV. Interview James Hinchcliffe. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're insured? You're insured. Okay. You're insured for this? All right. James Hinchcliffe. Uh, James, when the news came through this morning that you have to qualify in the trim that you're going to race. How stoked were you to hear that? You know, we were super stoked, Townsend. Uh, nothing I wanted more than, than to hear that news. The only thing I wanted more was to remind Graham that I wanted fries with that. I don't think he got my order right. Uh, I don't know where he went. I'll have to get back to him. No, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a complicated situation, but we have, uh, at the end of the day, man, if we go out there and we're doing 225s, 226s, that's still pretty freaking fast. And, uh, you know, my first time here, that would have put you on pole. So it's, it's just incredible how far we've come, really, as a series in the last few years and how the speeds have come up. It's not that we're going to be going slow today, uh, but the fact that we've got to kind of race the same setup as we're, uh, as we're qualifying, it, it adds a whole new element to it. How did a guy like you pull a girlfriend as hot as she is? <laughs> So, and that's a great question. It's a very, very valid point. Um, hypnosis is really actually the key. Uh, I, I saw a thing online. I bought this instructional DVD. Uh, a lot of work. A lot of work. Uh, 400 hours, I think, I put into it. And, uh, and that's all it takes. 
<laughs> maybe a book or a pamphlet at least that would go to the crowd at some point. Okay. Um, James, you're from Canada. My wife's from Canada. My kids can't ice skate. Can you ice skate? You know, I used to be pretty good. Uh, I used to be a pretty good skater, and then uh, it became quickly apparent that at 5'9 and 160 pounds, I was never going to play hockey for a living, so I bought a helmet and started racing instead. Yeah. Well, I think we should, I think we should, uh, what do we want to do now? Take some questions from the fan? Oh, turn the tables. Okay. He's not very comfortable with the mic, though, so give him, let him warm up to this. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Townsend, you have set a, a trend the last few years here at the Speedway, showing up in uh, what is undoubtedly some of the most recognizable, not only liveries on the car, but, uh, but, but fashion pieces. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about where the color pattern, what, what, what the inspiration was for this particular livery this year? Well, when you're unemployed for 11 months, creativity flows in all kinds of wild ways. So we've uh, we've had a lot of time to think about this over the off season, and the the Robert Graham Chevy this year is uh, certainly my favorite car I've ever had here. The fans seem to love it. It unzips with a splash of color, and if you come see our our front wing closely, closely, you'll actually notice it's an image from last year of last year's race car, along with Tony Kanaan and Marco Andretti, minus the licensing rights deal, flowing past uh, the brickyard. So um, it's a pretty innovative oh, scheme, and, and uh, Robert Graham, they did an awesome job. We're, we're very lucky to have him back, and uh, all that matters is, is it fast. Absolutely, I, I like you, you mentioned the you know the, the licensing thing. Technically, it's not Tony Kanan and Marco Andretti on the wing. It's 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 Terry it's Terry Lamon and uh, and Barco Fandretti. But um, the the other thing that you've been kind of known for, at least I've noticed, is your off-track vehicle is usually pretty exceptional during the month of May. Last year, you were driving a big rig around. Uh, did you not have a Hummer one year as well, an H1? Yeah, so last year, uh, one of my sponsors, uh, Motegi Racing slash American Racing Wheels, they have a full 53-foot transporter, and last year my daily driver to the track was the Volvo Tractor. Uh, and one of the hospitality drivers in the paddock said, you can't drive that, you don't have a CDL. And I said, the heck I don't. I pulled out my California driver's license. So uh, I didn't realize he meant commercial driver's license. So, uh, I'm not sure what the rules are here in Indiana, but it was fun while it lasted. Um, so yeah, daily driver this year is a Dreyer Reinbold Infinity, you know, a little more a little more pedestrian. Uh, but that was a lot of fun driving that back and forth. I tried to, actually what happened was, the scary part was one, one uh, day I drove into the Speedway and the yellow shirts were kind of freaking out. I thought they said go ahead. In fact, they were saying stop. I pulled in and I was meted by about seven Indiana State Troopers and somebody from the FBI. And oh, I'm Lord. sure that I was in the sights of the sniper on the roof because everybody was a little too excited. I, uh, I too had a run with the FBI last year, but we won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> it worries me slightly that you, you misconstrued go ahead or stop for go ahead when I'm on the racetrack at the same time as you. We're, we're cool with the, the yellows and the greens and the reds though, right? The colorblind thing, that's not an issue. Within reason. Okay, good enough. Um, I mean, I've got to put stop and go on my shoes, so I can't really criticize. Um, I've got, I've got a, I got a hardball question for you. This will be my last one. Okay. This is a serious one. I think you guys are gonna like this one. This is like, this is like Barbara Walters stuff here. It's got real. Townsend. You, you joke that you're unemployed 11 months of the year, but you're not unemployed. You are up in the booth calling on the Indy car races. Something you do very well. It's, it's something that you've done for a couple years now. I assume you enjoy it. I do. Okay. So, I assume you enjoy driving race cars also. I do her. Do her. Okay, good. So, All right. you get to do that for a bunch of times a year. You get to do this for the 500. If you were told that you could commentate on motorsport till the day you decided to retire at whatever, but you couldn't do the Indy 500 anymore, or you could do the Indy 500 every year, but you had to stop commentating, which would you choose? Hmm. I would give up everything in my professional life for just one more day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There you go. Yeah! And that is why Indy is Indy. Townsend Bell, everybody. Woo! And James Hinchcliffe. What a duo, huh? You know, yeah. the best thing about this, so right after the press conference happened just a few minutes ago, 
I looked at Susie and Jeremy and the PR team. I said, guys, get the stage lit up. Let's get some drivers. I know it's last minute, but I know they love their fans. I know they're going to show up. It is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is the Indy 500. I know it's qualifying days, but thank you so much, guys. All right. Thank you, fans, for being here. Thank you for staying with us. Let's hear it one more time for all the drivers who decided to take time out to say hello. Yeah. We're going to be on track shortly. Thank you, everybody.